All right, I'm finally tackling Akira. Never seen it before today. Let's talk about my first time watch of Akira. Welcome back to Almost Sideways, a place for movie conversations. My name is Adam. Today's conversation is going to be about my first time ever watching this amazing anime film called Akira. Now, keep in mind, big thing here, I, this is the first time ever watching it, and I'm not the more most well-versed a person when it does come to this genre of animation of anime I, some of my favorite films from the genre that i've seen spirit away your name howl's moving castle some of the just two of the ghibli films there so i'm not really as well first perfect blue is another one that i have seen that i really loved from last year that i watched that but akira um i have heard amazing things about this film and i just have never had a chance to watch this movie so i'm really looking forward to checking this one out. But before we get started, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe to our channel so we can talk movies with you guys. Make sure you guys hop in that comment section. Let me know some other anime films that you guys think I should check out that I would be interested in. Kind of my little gateway into the genres from through you guys. So please let me know in the comment section down there if you're listening to us on YouTube or watching us on YouTube. And also guys check out our podcast, Almost Sideways Movie Podcast, streaming wherever you guys are finding your podcast. So definitely check that out as well. So Akira is came out in 1988. So it's celebrating its 35th anniversary and it is rated R uh, no, to no shock to be honest it's two hours and four minutes so the best way for me to describe this film really is reading the synopsis here on imdb uh, this is really kind of a plot that has a lot of different moving parts and being a first time watch it's really going to be hard for me to explain what's going on so i don't want to do the film any uh disservice or injustice i definitely want to make sure i capture what the film really embodies so i'm going to read the uh, verbatim what the synopsis is on IMDb, and we're going to discuss kind of my thoughts on the film and some of the elements on my first time ever watching Akira. A secret military project endangers Neo Tokyo when it turns a biker gang member into a rampaging psychic psychopath who can only be stopped by a teenager, his gang of biker friends, and a group of psychics. So, Super crazy synopsis right there. We're diving in straight into Neo Tokyo in the year 2019. Uh, it it, it kind of goes back a little bit. Not really what 2019 looks like um, in this universe or our universe. But needless to say, this movie really jumps out in a big way with this amazing bike chase sequence at the very beginning. And you see the iconic red bike with our cast member castmates that were kind of following they're going up against this other rival gang called the clowns and immediately i'm on board the the scope and the the feel of this universe feels realized and has an amazing score overplayed by everything and i was kind of blown away and i didn't up to this point you know shortly into the movie i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm going to be watching and then we dive into a little uh, deeper into the movie and we see this guy who's clearly injured and kind of trying to escort a, a child that has some kind of disfigurement to him through this the streets of Neo Tokyo during this big protest. And he is brutally gunned down. It is a way to kick off this movie that I was not expecting. I wasn't quite ready for it. I got to say, it's probably one of my favorite uh, movie deaths Um of 1988 if i have to rank some of the those iconic deaths uh for that year that death of that one character gunned down in the street is such a fight um it's such violently happening right in the clear uh, day and that's not day but it's nighttime in front of a big protesting crowd in the the vibrancy of the colors and the uh just the, the reds oh my god it's, it's such a um haunting image to say the least and that really kicks off this movie because it happens like the first like 10 minutes of the movie and has this really crazy score that goes over it and you immediately kind of are hooked from there and I, I like i said i didn't really know what to expect i thought it was some kind of honestly if i had to think about it i maybe was thinking speed racer for some reason i don't know i know that's probably a, a bad take but i really had no idea what this movie was going to be about all i knew about the film was that iconic red motorcycle and I was not prepared for the craziness that does happen throughout the runtime. 
I will say that the final, the final like big epic battle becomes so crazy. There's these characters chain transforming into these giant beasts and uh, very uh, graphic in detail and gross and quite disturbing, disgusting imagery that is brilliant. It is such a a way to tell a story. And I I know for a while that Jordan Peele was attached to do a live action remake of this movie. Honestly, I don't know how this movie could ever be remade into live action. There is just too many parts. And quite honestly, I don't even think I remember everything that kind of happened because there's so much information that does get talked about in the middle, like the second act of the film that really kind of is important and important for the story moving forward as you're getting connected to the characters it is important that you are paying attention so if you're distracted you're going to miss something here and i feel like i had missed something being my first time but what this movie had shown me is that there is a reason why it is so iconic and the reason why it's so important for the genre is because the imagery is so uh eye popping it, it catches your eye it never lets you go and it is uh it's breathtaking to see i, I was kind of hooked on this movie uh, from the get-go we get some really great voice uh cast here matsu awada plays um canada which is our main uh character with the iconic red bike a great voice uh there as well and he is such a great character that you're really following through this whole story you're rooting for him and his group of biker gang as he's trying to get his friend back and you're meeting these new characters and obviously he's kind of a player too so he's trying to meet up with this girl and who was got arrested for the protest and you're following them and you're kind of following this young kid and I can, I can see myself really liking this movie um, when, if, if I was really younger, trying to put myself in those shoes and try to maybe dress up for this guy's character for Halloween. I can definitely see that. It's just an iconic look. That red just pops off the screen when he hops on with that jacket and with that bike. Great, uh, great stuff there. Uh, Taitsu is a voice by Nanzumo Sasaki. Uh, really uh, great. The whole cast is really phenomenal here. Um, I mean, Koyoma plays K, uh, Teso uh, Gende plays Ru. Again, I do apologize for not um, pronouncing the names uh, fully correct, but uh, really great to count with the cast that I should, uh, even though my poor pronoun, even though I'm really bad at saying their names, I don't want to take anything away from this amazing cast. They are truly brilliant here. And our director is Katsuhiro Otomi, Otomo. Uh, really great direction here. I, again, I think that he, you have to be a great director to tell such a crazy story as Akira. So many moving parts, so many uh, crazy moments that are kind of breathtaking here. I haven't seen a thing movie this kind of violent in this genre since Perfect Blue. And that was last year. There's still one big like anime that I do want to watch that I haven't seen. That's kind of a blind spot. Big one. I know of. it's Ghost in the Shell. Uh, and I can see me liking this. If it has anything on those two films, like Perfect Blue and Akira, I can definitely see myself kind of fitting right into that this genre really well. Again, Akira is a nonstop action ride from start to finish that is filled with great moments that of, of craziness. I was trying to put into perspective as I was watching this, what's kind of like the best comparison compared to a live action a movie that I, now keep in mind it's this movie is kind of like the resident evil video games meets mad max fury road if that is a really horrible comparison i can completely understand uh my logic here is that resident evil characters do transform into some pretty crazy uh beasts here and that's kind of what the third act reminded me of and you have the the amazing thrill ride with the amazing music the non-stop action of Mad Max Fury Road. And I can see that maybe George Miller took some um, of that nonstop action that he saw from Akira possibly and put it into Fury Road. I would like to think that that happened. Uh, this movie, it did come out uh, June 28th, 1991 in the States, uh, but it did, was big mainstream and did its big release in 1988. So Still had a couple years before it actually officially hits 35 here in the States, but we're going to still count it as a 1988 film. The opening, the box office, uh, 
I guess the gross worldwide, it made about $2 million, $2.8 million worldwide. So not a whole lot of money there. It, it didn't, like I said, didn't get really a big release on the statewide. I'm not sure even how the, um, how much the marketing was for back then either, but definitely it, it's a cult classic that people do remember and do talk about. And obviously you got in a big Spielberg movie like Ready Player One that kind of made me want to watch. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing that. So um, as far as IMDb has, it only has one win here. It's the Am- Amsterdam Fana- uh, Fantastic Film Festival. It won the Silver Screen Award for Katsuro Otamo, the director of this movie. So props off to him. Um, it's a great piece of cinema there. If you haven't seen Akira from 1988, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice, especially if you like anime. If you want to see something truly unique and original, this is a film to go watch. You're going to be blown away by some of the craziness that does happen. You're going to be kind of feel like you're bogged down with some of that a crazy dialogue and a big, you know, a lot of stuff that does happen conveyed in that dialogue, especially in that second act. But you're going to be sucked right back into this third act as well. This is one that being my first time watch, I cannot wait to, you know, dive back into my 4K that I got of this film and uh, just watch it again because it is a kind of a spectacular film. So it's an easy four star movie for me. I really liked Akira, but what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments section down below what you guys thought of Akira. And make sure you guys also tell me in the comments what's another popular anime or a lesser known anime that I should definitely go check out to uh, build up my uh, filmography of my, you know, my watch list for anime films too. So let me know down in the comments section. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe here on YouTube. And we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later.